This is Dr. Bob, and uh, you've all been wondering what I've been up to lately. It's uh, pretty much working on the same project. It's been the telescope, uh, the electrostatic telescope project. And lately I've been working on the, uh, the high voltage power supply and running simulations and simulations and more simulations. I've been running simulations for months now, uh, just trying out different designs to see what's going to be able to work and do this thing. The technical problem at hand is that I have 336 nodes on that uh, on the base plate that we've seen before in previous episodes. And each one of those needs power supply and I've decided I'm going to go up to 15,000 volts on each one of those nodes. That suggests that we need 336 individual power supplies. And I just am not interested in building 336 15,000 volt power supplies. So, um, I, and this has been part of the problem, how do I approach this and how do I solve this problem? Well, it is a problem. How do you how to resolve something like this? Um, and what I've come down to is that what I'll, what I'll use is a little switching thing because I've been able to find a multiplexer that can handle 15,000 volts and you can't just, you know, send it out there digitally. Uh, there, there's no device that I know of that can handle it or they can just do, 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 do. So, I uh, decided a mechanical switch and what it would be as a rotary with eight wheels on it and I have a design for this. Here was the original idea for 0 to 50 kV and then a MUX or a multiplexer and, and there the problem is there is no such multiplexer out there that can handle 0 to 50,000 volts and which was the original idea if I wanted to do the entire thing um, without any vacuum I would need 50,000 volts but if I just want to use this as a controller to uh, tune in the uh, tune in the um, use a vacuum to, to get the actual basic uh, shape and then use 0 to 10,000 or 0 to 15,000 to tune it in then I can do that but there is no much that will even do that so what I've resorted to as I said this uh, this uh, eight ring controller as you can see there are eight rings on this little guy right here and each one of these has 42 uh, connections on it and they'll be have to set up so that they won't short out between the connections you have to make sure that these are not so close that you know 10 kilovolts won't just arc right across it so this might have, I don't know how big it's going to have to be, but uh, here's, here's my, sort of a, like an idea that I had, they're going to be 42 connectors, these are only half of them. And then down here at the bottom we have a stepper motor, and what the stepper motor will, does is it'll take that whole business and it'll just rotate it. So it just takes the whole thing and just turns it. And, so, do, 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 do. and as it steps through each one, it'll hit eight of the, um, eight of the big nodes. Basically, let's, let's zoom in here and what you see, this is where the transformer goes right here. And uh, this will output to rect fire, and then because there is so much power being sucked off of this thing in the first uh, few milliseconds before this can make a full wave, even I put in a balancing circuit, um, uh, two capacitors, one capacitor coming off the rect fire, and then an inductor to basically uh, store up energy, and then another yet another capacitor to help balance this. This comes out to 36 volts. This next chip right here is an is an a. Uh, I should step up. It's called a boost converter. Um, this is a step up. It takes a low voltage and converts it to a high voltage, and it does it through these two inductors right here. Here we have a device on the outside. This is called gate one over here. This is gate two. This is uh, a MOSFET. This is a MOSFET, and these pull current down through these two um, inductors, L1 and L2, and they do it by clocking, uh, just putting sharp current spikes on these things. And the current spike does it produces a voltage spike. The voltage spike gets pushed back through these two um, Schottky diodes right here this diode and this diode, and then that energy gets stored up over in these two capacitors over here. That produces 100 volts on the output, and that's a well closely regulated voltage. It's regulated by this this set of sense resistors down here. So this chip controls, uh, that's FB as feedback in, in a sense, this chip controls what this output voltage is. Now that's, um, that's the 100 volt supply, and that, what that does is it feeds this inductor over here and getting this, this inductor here feeds another side. This is transformer two. This is yet another transformer. I don't have a transformer to this part right over here. But this transformer goes out to voltage doublers and more doublers and more doublers and more doublers and more doublers. Now the ratio of these is 101 1 to 31.62. Uh, when you, uh, this is 10 microhenries and this is 10 millihenries. About a thousand one difference between windings, uh, a 31 to one difference uh, between voltages. So if I put 100 volts across this, it should put 3,100 volts across that. This voltage doubler about here kicks this voltage up to, at 100 volts it'll kick this up to, and this is a big voltage doubler, 10,000 volts. Oh, the Arduino, still cranking away, sitting on 1023. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And it's down to, see how close I can get it to this, let's say 500. 
I'm going to try and get this to 500. That's 502. For, 502 is pretty close. It's the best I can do. But you can see what it's doing is it's constantly running. It's constantly reading the input here. This uh, potentiometer is tied to zero and five volts, and it, what it's reading at the uh, in, in here is taking this zero to five volts, converting it to 10 bit, 10 bit uh, digital signal. What I need coming off of here, and where that comes from is right here. This is a little sense line. You can see this one is sense number four, right here. And sense four has got a five meg on top and a 2.5k on the bottom. And what that will give give me is zero to five volts between zero and ten kilovolts. So ten kilovolts will give me five volts. At zero volts, it'll give me zero volt or zero volts out of here. So and at five thousand volts, it'll give me two and a half volts. So it's a sense line, and that will go into this guy right here. And this one has. Uh, I think some 10 inputs, which is all I need. I can take these 10 inputs, and I can read any one of them, and put them up here, put them up here and display them. But uh, having those 10, I only need 8, because I have 8 sense lines. These sense lines are only 8. And I can read any one of them. I just have to toggle through and say here what, what these develop values are. And now tell me what it is between 0 and 10,000 volts. Now, if I want to take this up to 15,000 volts, I can just rescale that little resistor right here and have a whole new, uh, if, I, if I can scale it, in fact, I could scale this up to 20,000 volts, and that would just cut this resistor at 1.25K and still get my sense lines out at 5 volts, um, 0 to 5 volts. What this device doesn't have, because it's not an Arduino, and I think the actual Arduino has one either, is an a, a D to A converter. Because once I get that information into the computer, I have to process it through what, a, what is called a PID controller, uh, or PID program, which is, a, as I said before, pro proportional integral derivative. That's called feedback control systems. This is a highly, highly technical field. And a lot of experts out there, people who make their living just off of feedback control systems, just off of knowing what they are and how to, to create them. No one has ever done this. Uh, here, here is, here's the plan right here. Now this is like HVPS, of course, what I've just told you right here is the control and the feedback. Here's the A to D converter. This comes off the sense line into an A to D converter, which is, this is playing to be, trying to be one right now, but it, yeah, there's no D to A converter on this board, so this will have to feed into an actual D to A converter and go back over into this, um, this other adder, into this adder circuit. So, and there's the 100 kilohertz signal that will actually spin up that, that inductor, the transformer, give it a sine wave, and you have to give it something to bite, put its teeth into. And generally, square waves don't, um, transformers don't like square waves very much. So, it's not very good at trans translating into energy, or pushing the energy across. What you see here is numbers that are drifting across this screen. You may not realize, it may not look like, because it looks like they're all the same, but you can see this is updating. And what this is, the uh, output in an analog to digital converter. So it's taking an analog signal, basically this little um, potentiometer that I wired up, and when I twist this, it changes that number. So I'm going to twist this around just a little bit. Okay, so I've twisted it, and you can see the numbers change. And when I run the simulation, it takes six hours. Just plotting these, as you can see, just plotting these little test waves here, and that's the easy part for crying out loud. Um, plotting these test waves has taken the last 15 minutes. And that's just plotting them. That's not calculating. It takes hours and hours for all this stuff to come up. So uh, when, every time I make one little change on this little thing, I sit here and I'm waiting. i go do something else and let the computer boil away at this. And this is not that big a circuit, but I mean, when I did the design, I designed each each little section of this separately. That's one design. Here's a design. That's a design. This is a design. That's a separate design. Each one of these have been separately designed and tested on this, but none of them have all been tested together until now. This is the raw file that I have, and all the data are stored in this file right here from the last test. I, I won't say that that rounds out the last whole month or anything, or even two months or three months. That's probably the last month, but I haven't reported in for a few months. So there's a lot more that's been going on behind the scenes than just this. Thanks for watching my program. If you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day.